Junkman from VintageRock.com, and uh, we're here at NAMM 2017. And uh, today, uh, we're going to be talking to uh, Stephen McSwain from McSwain Guitars, right? Yes, sir. Based out of Portland, Oregon, I do believe? As of October 2014, yes. Wow. By way of L.A. for about 20 years. So. You've got some really <laughs> special looking guitars. Thank Tell you. us a little bit about your products. Well, basically, I've been building since uh, about 1991. I started uh, by buying just a guitar body and carving faces in it. And as we're here at NAMM, it all brings things full circle. Steve Vai has that guitar that I first carved because by way of Nam, I got Steve's number and sent him that guitar. So, of course, instant, you know, credibility. Yeah, there you go. Right. Then Al Allison Chain's got a couple, then Corn got a couple, and Living Color, and on and on. But I started in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I would weasel my way backstage at every show that came through town Aerosmith and Prince, and, you know, on and on and on. So these guys would dig the stuff, started buying stuff. Blues Traveler bought a couple, you know, and then I started just kind of not just buying guitar bodies, but actually carving them out. So I wanted my own shape, I wanted my own headstock, I wanted my own look, and so it's kind of evolved. Started carving things first, but this is now sort of the incarnation that it's been for probably about 10 years, where I'll do wood over metal. And I like to find wood that has a story behind it and, and try to make a, you know some cool piece of functional art out of it. This is an old 1930s, 1940s oil can and of course I'm a sucker for lights too. It's like I'm I'm the I'm the, the the crazy guy that loves to, you know, oh shiny object, you know. But this was the very first set neck guitar of my own shape that I ever made. These are old airplane gauges that were view meters for uh, just jet airliners that I find I would find in scrap heaps and all over. Old aircraft metal. Uh, knob is interesting. Yes, this is actually sterling silver and, and as the evolution of doing metal work goes. I started carving wax and then I'll cast these and it's a lost wax casting process. So this is sterling silver. I do gears and all different kinds of things. But um, these are actual hex bolts that I hacksaw in half and inlay in there. The, the screw side dots and the wood is one of my favorite things. When in 1989, Hurricane Hugo blew through North Carolina four hours inland and decimated about 50 black walnut trees on my great uncle's farm. So I'd go get this wood, bring it back. And so I love this because it has a story. You know, this thing got knocked down by a friggin' hurricane. So, you know, that's so, quite the story right there. How often does that happen? You make some good rock and roll out of that. Yeah, so. bet. You know, they rock you like a hurricane. Right? There you go. Man. Sorry. I've always loved the American flag. It's just such a ubiquitous thing, you know, and you see it and it's just like, oh, you know, it inspires pride and, and you know, honor and legacy. And, and so I hadn't found an American flag guitar that I actually liked. So working with metal, I wanted to get something that was different, that people would see, that was three dimensional and of course shiny. Right. So I took the aluminum put it on, seamed it all together, had the cast stars, and I put real uh, th uh, 357 Magnum bullet shell casings in here. <laughs> so, you know, you get the gun, God's guns and ammo, man! <laughs> but it's a thin sheet of aircraft aluminum over mahogany, so you get the warmth of the wood with the brightness of the uh, metal, which is pretty cool. And I'm happy to say I just got a patent awarded on this aluminum piece here. So what this is, is we call it the tone layer. And so it's an actual channel that has about a millimeter thick aluminum all the way down and then this ring of aluminum around for the binding. So th that screws and glues down to the neck and then the uh, fretboard gets inlaid in there. So I did it for aesthetics first, kind of like with the metal, but you get the uh, aluminum cool look of aluminum binding on there with the screw side dots. And then you get the added benefit of extra sustain and and a little bit of stiffening to the neck so how, how heavy seven about seven and a half pounds yeah bad. no yeah, and that's great. the thing it looks like with it metal like it's going to be really, heavy, really yeah. heavy but you know first and foremost it's a guitar and if you're going to spend the kind of dough that i'm asking on these it better damn well play amazing and be light you know or, or fairly light so i want to make it a functional piece that you can take with you and that's where the, the flag wall art came in. And so, you know, in your house, you got your guitar hanging on a wall, it's really cool. Take it down, you got an ugly hook up there. So I'm like, I want an American flag up there. When I take it down, I still have an art piece. So, you know, studio, your home, office, whatever. I actually have a bunch of guys who have bought them just to, to hang in their houses as art pieces. So, you know, but different variations on it. This is the black flag with the uh, sterling silver skull stars. Um, 
This is the carved top version, which is tone chambered mahogany. So, you know, same thing, about eight pounds. Um, split coil, I've been using Arcane uh, humbuckers, Rob over at Arcane, especially wires them to kind of balance out the metal and the wood, so you get really cool, um, cool tones out of it. But then they're split coil, so when you split them, you're getting the full power of the humbucker, but then you split it, you don't lose the power. You just get that kind of single coil stratty throatiness. So that was when I first started designing guitars. I loved strats and I love Les Balls. So I kind of wanted to combine elements of both of those. And so, you know, the strings through the body, the tunematic style bridge, which is tone pros, those guys have been amazing. Dwight and Brian Devereaux are just awesome. It's like an all-star gear. Seriously, no, I want the best of the best stuff, you know, and so you have just killer, killer quality components and wood and metal and stuff that's gonna, you know, be your art piece that you write some killer rock and roll on. For sure. So, um, but there again, you know, with the with the gas cans and things. I he likes it. his gas cans. This is, this is gas can, you know, so. And of course, my sucker for lights with the uh, red light that lights up. The lug nuts for volume knobs. This is a, a maple fretboard that it's stained red and black and, you know, but this is a through neck. So I did through neck tone chambered sides and everything. But, you know, if I find it, I could probably make a guitar out of it. If it's in a junkyard and it looks cool, I could probably incorporate it. So American pickers are going to be like uh, contacting you, right? <laughs> hey, man, I'm on the Internet. Give me a call. <laughs> now, I mean, a lot of these people, a lot of these things come from your design, obviously. Sure. Do you get a lot of input from the artists on things? Can you make well, me one yes, of these? Yes, absolutely. Like, you know, if, if, and I'll, um, I wish I had pictures of it. I, I had one of my very, very good friends who's been one of my best benefactors is Ben Moody from the band Evanescence. Um, and he had, he's probably bought 10 guitars from me. And he's crazy. He's like, make it, I'll, I'll buy it. And I'm like, well, what are you, what are you looking for? And he's like, well, I want something crazy that nobody else has. And I'm like, well, okay. So one of my favorite pieces is a Frankenstein guitar. It's carved, it's normal shaped guitar, but it has Frankenstein's head that glows in the dark and the hands grip into the body. And it's literally leather cord stitching that looks like bloody stitching around the perimeter. And it fits into a huge wall display that looks like a metal exam table. And it has a mini Jacob's ladder that tops 10,000 volts. So when you plug it in, it's like zzzz. It's actually pronounced Frankenstein. Oh, uh, Frankenstein. <laughs> That sounds beautiful. Yes, I know a bunch of people that would like that model. It's, it's pretty cool. So that, you know, um, I have a collector out of New York that has bought, he's, he, was, he and Ben were competing for a while, but um, did a uh, 67 GTO, a 57 T-Bird, and a 58 Corvette, which is that on the back of the car. That's actually you know. a 19-inch long car guitar that I carved out of wood. It has little rubber tires that will roll across the floor, and you pull the volume knob up, that's activated, uh, activates a nine volt battery, the headlights and taillights light up. So oh, beautiful. it's just whatever. Somebody has an idea, I will do my best to make it exactly like that and then incorporate my ideas into it. And you know, so, I mean, I've had guys that'll come up and ask me to do stuff that I'm like, it's gonna look ugly. And they're like, well, what do you think? It's your idea. So go, let's roll with it. So we kind of combine ideas and, and go. So, do you have a favorite? My favorite? I, above and beyond. Above and beyond? I know it's tough. Stay cool. I think the stay cool yeah. because that I can't find that can anywhere else, and it's just you just the way that guitar plays. It ACDC is one of my all-time favorite bands, and you know I'll, I'll get to do a little sing a little uh, Bon Scott every now and then, you know. And that guitar is straight up Malcolm Young. It, it's split coil and the bridge, and it's just like oh, just got that tone. You're there, man. You're there. You're just like you know beating around the bush. <laughs> um, now, do you have like a do you have like a like an actual number of the different ones that you have? I mean, how many are in this oh, collection that's I mean, that's going on? You mean like from day one of building? Like no, but I mean you know yeah, basically how many are out there? I would say probably 150, maybe something like that over That's the great. years. So yeah, about 150, I would think. So you know, I used to do a lot of subcontract work for companies like Schecter and ESP and Warrior, and I kind of pulled back from that because I've gotten so busy with my own stuff, you know. So, but uh, you know, there's a number of guitars out there that are you know still floating around. Well, you guys keep your keep your minds working so that uh, you know Stephen can make you the guitar of your <laughs> dreams, or you know whatever you whatever you want, he can make it for you. So yeah, yeah. a website where people can go visit you, McSwainGuitars.com, which is M C S W A I N Guitars.com. So yeah, just shoot me an email, Stephen S T E P H E N at McSwainGuitars.com. So I always answer my own emails, man. Yeah, I'll take that hat off, put the builder hat on, take that off, do a little accounting, you know. 
Yeah. Foggy accounting, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen, I appreciate Junk you talking man, with dude. us at VintageRock.com. So All right. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. You got it. JunkmanVintageRock.com with McSwain Guitars here at NAMM 2017. <laughs>